Okay, so this question is uh, involving uh, angle rules and working out uh, missing angles. Um, the key thing always is to remember to write down why you're doing things. So we recognize here we've got two angles that meet at a point, and the rule says that uh, angles that meet at a point add up to, when they're on a straight line, add up to 180 degrees. So the sum we do is going to be 180 degrees, take away 126 degrees, so 54 degrees. So we know the answer is 54 degrees. It's worth one mark, so they're not looking for a reason for this question. They're just looking for the answer. Work out the size of the angle marked Y. Well, again, we look at this picture, and we can see when we break it up, there's an isosceles triangle. Now, we must remember that at the base angles of an isosceles triangle, so we knew this was 54 degrees, and this is also 54 degrees. And we recognize that in a triangle, angles add up to 180 degrees. So isosceles, because these two lengths were the same, the equal sides is telling us that the dashes on the side lines. And the angles in here are going to add up to 180. So when it says work out the angle Y, we're going to do 180 degrees, take away the 54 degrees plus the 54 degrees. So that's 108, so we're left with 72 degrees. Again, only worth one mark, so we don't actually need to write the reasons, but we need to be thinking that uh, we do know them so that we can actually write them if we need to if the question is worth more marks. So, when we come to this question, we can see there's a star in front of it. That shouts out at you, please write reasons. So, obviously this question, and you can see from the marks, they're worth a little bit more than the previous ones. So, we do need to give some reasons for our answers. So, let's go through. Um, so, we look at the picture and decide what facts do we know, so that we can work with this question. Well, we can see that the arrow is on some sides, therefore, it's about parallel lines and we'll have to remember the rules of parallel lines. So we remember that if we see angles trapped between two parallel lines, then these two angles are the same, and they're called alternate angles. And alternate angles are equal. We could be working with this picture, where we've got a line crossing parallels, and these two angles will be equal, and we'd say corresponding angles are equal. And we could also be working with where we've got the two parallel lines and a line crossing them, then these two interior angles between the parallel lines add up to 180, so if that was angle A and that was angle B, whatever numbers they were, then the two angles would add up to 180 degrees. And for these two, there's loads of different ways of saying what it is, but I prefer co-interior, because they're co together, and they're interior inside. Co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So when we see parallel lines in an angles question, then we need to be thinking it could be any one of these three rules that we need to be giving us reasons for why we've chosen a particular angle. So we go through the question. Then. So it wants to find the value of the angle EBC. So we follow the letters around, EBC, and there's the angle trapped in the lines EB and BC. So they're after this angle here. Well, if we follow, because there's a parallel side there, if we follow this round and keep following it round, keep following it round, then what we can see is that we've created the Z picture. So we've created a picture like this. So if that angle is 72 degrees, then this angle, the alternate angle, is also 72 degrees. So X is 72 degrees. So the answer here is 72 degrees. It's a start question though, so we have to give a reason. So we can say angle EBC is alternate is an alternate angle with angle ADB. So must be equal. So we've given a reason, you know, we've said that the angle here is an alternate angle with this angle here. And we've used the proper language by giving the three letters and the word angle 
to show that we mean the angle trapped where the center, where the centered letter is. It then says uh, find the size of the angle marked Y. Well, the angle marked Y here. Uh, we can see that Y is part of this triangle, and we know that angles in a triangle add up to 180. So it'd be nice if we knew what this angle here is, because we already know that this one is 72. Again, the advice is that once you work out angles, add them into the picture, because they might help you do other questions. And so therefore it'd be nice if we knew what this angle is, because then we can get that one. Well, we do know what this one is, because we've got another situation where we've got angles on a straight line that meet at the point, add up to 180. So this angle here must be 50 degrees. 130 plus 50 makes 180. And therefore we can work out what y is, because we know these two angles added together is 122. Take it away from 180, then we end up with 58 degrees. But it's a start question, two marks, so we need to give the reasons. So we'd have to say that angle C E B, so this angle here, equals 50 degrees, and the reason angles that meet at a point on a straight line add up to 180 degrees and then we'd have to say that angles in a triangle add up to add up to 180 degrees so basically triangle EBC angles add up to 180 and then we'd show the sum 180 take away 50 degrees take away 72 degrees equals 58 degrees so we're just justifying um, the answers because they're a start question and we need to explain why we've done what we've done and parallel lines are in the picture so we're likely to have used one of these theories to work out the missing angle and we need to write down what's going on. Okay, so that's a run through of working out missing angles in shapes.